So we're told let f of x equal 2x squared minus 18 over g of x, where g of x is a polynomial. And then they tell us which of the following is a possible graph of y is equal to f of x. And they give us four choices here. And like always, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you could give a go at it. Look at our f of x, and then think about which of these graphs actually match up or could match up to that f of x. All right, now let's, let's work through this together. They don't give us a lot of information. They don't tell us anything about the denominator of this rational expression. But they do tell us this numerator. And like we've seen before, it's useful to factor the numerator and see at what x values do interesting things happen. In particular, at what x values does the numerator equal 0? So if we factor the numerator up here, we could rewrite f of x as being equal to, let's see, we could factor out a 2 out of the numerator. So it's 2 times x squared minus 9. And that's all going to be over g of x. We don't know what the denominator is. We just know that it's a polynomial. And let's see, here in the numerator, x squared minus 9, you might recognize that as a difference of squares. So we can factor that further. So we still have that original 2. And it's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. We've seen that at multiple times. If that looks unfamiliar to you, I encourage you to watch the video on differences of squares or factoring polynomials. x squared minus 9 is the same thing as x squared minus 3 squared. So it's x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then all of that is still going to be over g of x. So the first thing that we might realize, OK, when does our numerator equal 0? Well, when, when x is equal to negative 3 or when x is equal to positive 3. If x is equal to negative 3, this expression is going to be 0. If x is equal to positive 3, this expression is equal to 0. So you might just say, well, maybe we have zeros at plus or minus 3. So maybe at x is maybe, maybe f of negative 3 is equal to 0 and f of positive 3 is equal to 0. Those values sure look like they make the numerator equal to 0. And then we look at our choices. And when we look at our choices, this choice A does seem to have a 0 at positive 3. But it doesn't have one at negative 3. It has a vertical asymptote at negative 3. So that seems, that seems a little bit confusing. This choice B does have a 0 at at positive 3, but it has nothing going on here at, or nothing interesting going on at negative 3. It defines negative 3. It doesn't even have a vertical asymptote there. So once again, this looks a little bit perplexing. Choice C, choice C has a removable discontinuity at positive 3, and then it has a vertical asymptote at negative 2. So once again, this doesn't have anything interesting going on at, at x is equal to negative 3. So still a little perplexing. And this one has zeros at positive 6 and negative 6. So none of the choices have zeros at both x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3. So what's going on? Well, what we need to realize is just because something makes the numerator equal to 0 doesn't mean that it's definitely going to be a 0 for that function. And you might say, well, how can that be? Well, think about situations in which those values would also make the denominator equal to 0. So let me write out some potential f of x's here. So we just know that g of x is a polynomial. So f of x could be, we know the numerator, 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 over well, let's just say g of x is, I'm just going to make up something. g of x is equal to x plus 1. Well, in this situation, none of the values that make the numerator equal 0 make the denominator equal 0. So this is a situation where you would have two zeros at x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3. So this would be the two, two zeros. Two, two zeros. And so let's look at another situation. Let's look at a situation where f of x is equal to, we know the numerator, x plus 3 times x minus 3. And let's say that we do have, let's say that one of those x values, positive or negative 3, do make the denominator equal to 0. So let's say x plus 3, and then say times x plus 1. Well, you see here, now, since x plus 3 can is both in the numerator and the denominator, you could divide x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. They cancel out. And here, x equals negative 3 would be a removable discontinuity. So this would have, this would have 0, 0 at x equals 3 and a removable 
removable discontinuity at x equals negative three. And so those values that make the numerator equal to zero, we now see it could be a zero, or it could, it could represent a removable discontinuity. And here I just picked a removable discontinuity to be at negative three, could be, or it could be the other way around, or it could be at both values. If this was x plus three times x minus three over x plus three times x minus three, then you would have a removable discontinuity at both x is positive three and negative three. And then you could go even further, f of x, could look like this. It could be two times x plus three times x minus three over, over x plus three squared, and I'll just make up some other, another expression here, x plus one. So what's going to happen here? Even if you divide the numerator and the denominator by x plus three, you're still going to have one x plus three left over in the denominator. That could cancel with one of the x plus threes, but you're still going to have an x plus three. And so in this case, you would have a vertical asymptote. So in this case, you would have a zero, zero at x is equal to three, and you would have a vertical asymptote. I'll just shorten it, shorthand. You'd have a vertical, I'll just write it out. A vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative three. So these particular examples that I just showed you showed you that any value that makes the numerator equal zero aren't necessarily zeros for the function. They could be zeros, they could be removable discontinuities, or they could be vertical asymptotes. But they would all occur at x is equal to positive or negative three. So with that lens, now let's look at the choices again. So choice A has a zero at x equals positive three, and it has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. So that's actually very consistent with this, this, circum, this, this situation that I just described. So choice A actually is looking, is looking pretty good. Choice B has a zero at x equals three, but its vertical asymptote looks like it's at x equals two, and nothing interesting is happening at x equals negative three. So we can rule that out. So if you look at choice C, you have a removable discontinuity at x equals positive three, which is completely possible. We've seen that situation where something that makes the numerator equal zero could be a removable discontinuity if you have that same expression in the denominator. But then the vertical asymptote isn't at x equals negative three, it's at x equals negative two. So that rules it out. Once again, nothing interesting happening at x equals negative three. And here you have two zeros, but they're not at x equals positive or negative three, they're at x equals positive or negative six. So we can definitely rule that one out. So we should feel pretty good about, we should feel pretty good about choice A.